Uh, so yeah, Faisal, why don't you start with introducing yourself? Okay, uh, hello everyone. I'm Faisal, a recent graduate from Addis Ababa University in Software Engineering Department, and also a study first group member. And today I'm going to be uh, conducting an interview, which is organized by uh, HSV in a competition called Champions League, and looking forward to the results. Great, thank you. So uh, for it, for uh, some of you who doesn't know the format of the uh, knockout stages, uh, there will be two participants, uh, each one having 30 minutes to solve a question. And the one who solved the question better uh, progress to the next round. So let's start this round with sending Faya the first question. So I just sent you the question on uh, Telegram. So. Whenever you open the question, do screen share and we'll start the timer. How will I give you two minutes just to read the question? And if you have clar if you want clarifying questions, then uh, ask. Okay. Okay. Let me rephrase the question and if I miss some part, you can correct me. Okay. Okay, basically we're given an intervals representing a range of numbers from left to right. Mm -hmm. And we'll be given a query, a list of numbers. Then our task is to find the shortest interval uh, in which these queries are, can be, like, you can call them inserted or can be found. And if we can't find it, we can uh, we should return minus one. Yep. Okay. Mm. The first thing that came to my mind is we can like check for every query, every intervals, and keep track of the minimum one. And uh, finally, it's like saving into the answer, then returning that answer. It's kind of the brute force approach, taking every intervals for every query. And this would uh, take me, if I can represent this, the plane of the intervals. And then represent this the line of there is the time time pairing for big C becomes n times m for every mm -hmm. query m we are going to check every interval and so is then the constraints uh, which is ten raised to five. And there is around 10, there is to 10, so uh, it's a slow approach. And I don't think it's uh, acceptable at this point. Am I correct? Yeah, we, so yeah, the brute force solution or your all n times m solution, that's not uh, like um, a fine solution, but the time limit for our constraints um, is not like ideal. So let's try to improve on this. Okay. Mm. Let me think for a minute and I'll get to you. Yep. Okay, cool. Okay. Uh, I didn't come up with something solid, but we can like start having a discussion and maybe can figure out things. Okay, okay. Then, cool. uh, let's take this example then. And we have this query.
And for two, like what we are trying to find is the intervals that can hold two. And in order two to be included in an interval, the, the left and the right boundaries should be uh, equal to it. So this one is valid. This one is also valid. This one is also valid, but this is not valid. And out of this one, the, the answer is this one because this is the shortest one. Yep. Um, like the overhead is now. Uh, like checking every queries in here. Uh, maybe like, like uh, reversing the search might help us. I don't know, like, like uh, checking these intervals and uh, from these queries, what numbers should be put in here. And from this one, also, mm. but um, the range of the interval could be quite big, and asking which numbers reside in the queries for that range um, would be quite hard. Yeah. It, the queries can reach up to 10 raised to 7, and it's going to be not efficient, this approach also. Yeah. OK. Mm. Are the queries unique? Mm. Uh, doesn't really say so in the question, so like we can say we can think of the, them as not unique. Mm. But it doesn't uh, matter really uh, if you have yeah, the answer. Yeah, it doesn't matter. That, time, can, like, yeah. Not, yeah. If, yeah. If it's the same, it's gonna be easy. Like you can save it mm -hmm. and you can reuse yep. it. That, but. Mm. Like I'm thinking maybe we can use uh, some sort of binary search to locate the like starting and ending intervals for a given number. For example, for two, uh, the starting interval is this one and the last one is this one. Okay. And we don't need to check any events or intervals after this and said this. And in that case, it might decrease the complexity, but still like if the upper and the lower bound are in the end, we are going to check every element in the intervals and it's gonna be the same. Mm -hmm. So binary search is not also help to that much. Mm -hmm. mm. Interval has a range of uh, the, you can calculate the range using formula given, which is left minus right plus one. So this uh, minus two plus one is two. And uh, for this one, it's four. Uh, for this one, it is. Uh, Seven, but like, will the interval help us 
the, the, the range because uh, we don't know we might have the same interval lengths for different intervals left and right and it might affect us mm -hmm. uh, maybe think of uh, a way to order the intervals in the queries such that it takes less time to query uh, think of an, or an ordering that would make your job easy uh, so you'd query it you'd, in order to reduce the time for the query. Mm. Like I was thinking of sorting the queries and also the intervals. Okay. And if the queries are sorted, um, okay, this one, if queries are sorted, maybe two, five. 19.2, and if uh, let's say the interval is also sorted based on the based on the start time. Okay. Um, like this. And you can check the first one from the intervals in this one. Mm -hmm. um, and it fits for this one. But uh, one problem is like, the second one fits for this one, which is two, which is correct. And we don't have this one, uh, the array. We might assume we don't have anything for five. So we need also to consider this one, which is uh, sorted in the first uh, place. Yep. One thing like I get from sorting this into queries is I know they are coming after uh, at least uh, after each other. Maybe we might find uh, with, uh, the same duplicate numbers, but it doesn't matter. And if um, there's an interval, we find the separate one for two. And uh, we know this interval is not fitting five. There is no way it's, it's going to be fitting the other numbers after that. Uh, could you repeat that one again? What was it? Like, uh, let's say we find for the first query, which is two, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this is the shortest and uh, yes. the answer. And we see this is not fitting for the next query, which is five. Yeah. And if it is not fitting for five, it's not going to be uh, fitting for the rest of queries. Yes, that is true, yeah. So, We can I, we can eliminate this one after uh, calculating this one. Mm -hmm. Then for five now we see this is the shortest one and we got the answer for nineteen. We don't have anything. What about sorting in the ending, in the ending time? If in the ending time it is sorted, this will be the arrangement three, five, eight, twenty-five, and um, two can only fit up until this. Okay. And this is the answer for five. 
This is the answer. For 19, we don't have answer. For um, yeah, still, I'm not clear about how I'm going to use the sorting capability because for 19, I will not have anything. Maybe like I can stop uh, here. First, I see this one. It is fitting for two. Then uh, we saved it. The, the like the we saved the links, and we come here to check. And now it is also fitting, but it is uh, uh, it's, uh, longer in in. So yeah, let's. Uh, I like the previous approach better, uh, which was sorting by um, the start time. And so we were struggling with. Um, we would have uh, like this was way previous, but we we are struggling with picking uh, the shortest interval for the available intervals for two in the beginning. For for example, for two one eight two three and two five were options. And yeah. we're supposed to pick now, like we know those are options and we, we want to find uh, the shortest interval. So like think of like, um, like how do you manage uh, your intervals, like the valid intervals and how can you pick um, yeah. your the, shortest uh, interval yeah. is like. From the valid ones, we can, we can pick the shortest one, like we can, um sort or like like select the minimum language because this one is this one has seven this one has two this one has um this one has four so this is the one that is shorter then we can pick this one yes uh so try to build on the solution um, from that sorry okay if continue. the if this is if this is not um, like fitting for five, we should see the next um, possible or the next larger uh, inter interval out of this. Mm -hmm. And um, for five, see this is the fitting ones. And uh, if we pop this, if we pop this one, we're gonna end up with two five. And um, we see two five is a uh, smaller in interval and can fit five. And uh, for nineteen, for nineteen, we don't have anything. And for yep. twenty two, we have um, this one only. And this is the answer. Mm. But first, initially selecting uh, the intervals for two. After sorting it into, uh, after sorting into uh, starting time, maybe we can put this into some sort of uh, heap that can give us the minimum out of this. Mm -hmm. Then we can select the minimum for uh, the current query. Then we pass and we check for the second query if it's fitting. That's the answer, but if it's not fitting, we check. Oh yeah, you're breaking up. Uh, do, do you mind? Do you mind, uh, Faya? Do you mind can repeating you hear me? from? Yes, I can now. But do you mind repeating from when you said I was thinking of using a heap and then continue from that? Okay. Yeah. What I was thinking is like for two, we have this range that is possible, and we can select the minimum one by using a heap. Uh, that uh -huh. can give us the shorter interval. And okay. after picking the shorter interval, uh, our aim is to use that shorter interval for uh, for um, the queries that we can uh, possibly like put for this one. Two is only uh, can be put here, and five since five is not. Going to be fitting here, 
we can remove this this interval and try to see the next one, which is two five and out of the valid ones, this is um, the correct one. And uh, like um, then we pop this one and we check for 19 and we see the interval is not, uh, the interval is the remaining interval, which is this one also and this one is not fitting. So we should continue trying to look for the possible intervals, then we end up having none. Then finally for 22, the only interval remaining is 20 and 25. So to summarize what I thought is for a given query, let's say I'm on here. Uh, after sorting it into starting, I'll add the possible ones, this, this and this into the mean heap that is going to give me the minimum one by using the interval links. Then I'll pick the minimum one and see if it's fitting uh, because uh, it is the valid ones, it, it's gonna be fitting. So uh, I'll uh, assign the answer for two, which is two. Then now I'm here and I stopped uh, here and try to add this interval and we see it is not fitting. Uh, so mm -hmm. we should only consider the one we have in the heap. And we see that two five is uh, two five is also two five is the like is the answer. It's it was fitting, and for five, it's gonna be three or four. Then while I'm at nineteen, I try to look. I I stopped here. This I stopped for the intervals. I'm here. And for the queries, I'm here. Then for 19, I try to add this, this one. It is not fitting. So I should only consider the one I have in the heap. And in the heap, I have two five and one eight. And two five is not fitting and I'll remove that. And also one eight is not fitting, I'll remove that. Then the heap becomes empty. So I don't have any event that can be uh, that can hold the 19. So the answer for this one is minus one. Then finally for 22, I try to add uh, possible possible intervals. And for this one, it is possible. Then we add to 2025 20, range into the heap and it's gonna be the only one and we see it is fitting. So we give six to, 22. Then since uh, this is sorted, I need to keep track of the their indexes somewhere and return the answer in the correct order because um, the query order matters. Yep. Did you get my approach? Yep. That looks like a pretty good solution. Um, if you feel like you've handled everything, uh, you can start implementation. Okay. Uh, for now, maybe, maybe you can start from by, by analyzing the time complexity. Okay. For this one, I'm going to read through the, through the um, queries, the intervals, and in the, to the heap. So it's going to be, if I assume the language would be M. Uh, times I'm going to be adding uh, m login plus n. So for um, each queries, I'm going to pop from the heap. And um, at max, we can, we can, we can like pull a all elements. So each each polling requires me logarithm. So this is gonna be n log n. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. What's over? What's our overall time complexity? Overall time complexity for each query, 
um, I'm going to be adding intervals into the heap and uh, uh, pulling out intervals from the heap. So uh, pulling and adding is log n. And at worst case, I can add all the elements in, in the intervals. So pulling and adding require me and log in for each query. So it's going to be om times n log n. Uh, maybe we should look into that. Uh, and instead of thinking about um, what you do for each query, think of um, how, how much each interval is added um, and popped from oh. the queue, so, so heap, I should say. So this in, in this case, it's worse than the previous our previous yeah, yeah. solution. Where yeah. um, in, I'm not doing this uh, all these operations for all of the queries. It's uh, okay. spread over the all queries and uh, one inter like all of the intervals are added once and and it's going to be popped once only. So total for all for, for all intervals, we have n log n. And uh, for queries, we have m. Yep. OK, for space complexity, we have uh, all the, we can have all the elements from the interval into the heap. So it's going to be of. And, and representing the length of the intervals. Yep. OK, in that case, we can start uh, implementing it. So first, one thing uh, we need to do is we need to keep track of the original order of the queries. And uh, our, our answer is the same as the size of the query. So, And you can have a hash map that keeps track of the queries and their indexes. After sorting it, uh, we, since we're going to use the, the order the indices, we need to keep it uh, in a place. And while uh, we, like calculating the answer, we can use these indices to but we might have um, duplicate numbers, so yes. it's better to keep track of both. Of... Uh, does it really matter? Um, like, does it, the answer change for? Imagine we have two. Mm, actually, like one one thing we can do is we can like um, we can um, clone the queries and sort it then finally like you can put the answer into a hash, a hash map then we can like mm -hmm. iterate through, through the queries and uh yep like we can use all the completed answers from there so one thing we can do is also we can create And sort it. And this will be here. And you can call it um you can call it hash. And also we need to sort. Intervals. Mm. 
using start time. Then after sorting the, the queries that is cloned in the intervals, um, we need also the, the mean heap. And um, mean heap will hold um, intervals. Uh, we can use an uh, array also the same as the input given, and we can call it um, well, a string. You should use um, Okay, we have uh, all the, the structures we need. Then uh, we need to have a pointer starting from zero and while the indices less than the query language. And also we need um can call it this to varying weights. And also we need to have um interval index and we can do it. Initially both of them were zero. And um, um uh, Query. Yes, first one is long query. And we get the, the query. Then we are going to add the small range uh, in the intervals up until this is um, fitting. So um, starting. Um, Actually, we can use the high course. Um, this one is and if the there was such that index um start is Less than or equals the query, it is a valid answer. So we can, we can insert into and then. Um, So if okay, maybe one thing we can do is we can we can check the opposite one, which is this, and we can break. And instead of that, uh, we can always uh, then. 
And now we have the, all the uh, uh, ranges that are possible for this query. And now we check if um, while the smallest string. Right. Okay. T and um, the one with the smaller range is not um, fitting the query we have. We should call uh, all the elements. So smallest range. Is not empty. We can we can put the answer and okay, the answer should be um the rain. Uh, okay, the let me calculate the answer here for everyone. So the range is first into bad one minus then Put the answer in the cache. And uh, for all the queries, yeah, this will uh, at least. Uh, Did this the answer belt? If, uh, if it is not empty. And if it is okay. empty, uh, the answer is uh, minus one. Okay, let's wrap it up uh, quickly because okay. we have only two more minutes. Two or three, picking the three. Okay, now we are going to use the query. It is not interrupted. And finally, we can return the answer. Uh, okay, did we ever increase uh, the query index counter? The query index counter. No, so for each. Okay, it's the. Um, I think our time is up, but uh, 
I have understood your overall solution. Overall solution. It was it was quite well. It was working. Uh, I feel like this is just you have uh, a bug on your code. Just implementation details, but the idea and the provided time complexity was uh, was fine. It was it was working. So thank you. Thank you for. Thank you, Gurus. Um, so I'll be um, asking Nati, our second contestant, to join the session, and we'll conduct the second part of the interview after one minute. Uh, now we have our second contestant, uh, Nati Nael Mulgita or Nati M. Uh, so why don't you start with introducing yourself, and we'll uh, start the interview. All right, my name is Nathanael. Uh, I'm a recent graduate from Addis Ababa University in software engineering. And uh, I've been enjoying the ATSV program. I've been learning a lot from it. Uh, and here I am for the semifinal. Can we start? Yep, I'll be sending the question. Okay. Let me share my screen and open the question. Thank you. I see. Uh, I think I understand the question, but I also feel like I missed something. Uh, if it's not a problem, can you rephrase the, pro the question? Like, just to make sure I didn't miss anything. Maybe you summarize the question, what you understood, and then if the, it's not the right thing, and I can summarize it, or I can say like, what's okay. not right. Uh, cool. So we're given intervals with huh? left and right bounds, and we're given queries. So we're yep. supposed to uh, find an interval with the minimal window frame that includes our query. And yep, that's our, it. Nothing else? Yep. And from our, uh, like here from our constraints, we can sort any of this, like the intervals, the queries. So mm -hmm. is that all, all right? Like, can I also sort uh, the interval, the queries? Yes, yes you can, but uh, the output depends on the queries, like the your output should uh, have yeah. the, there's the yeah. there for the queries, not the intervals. Yes. Yes. Okay. And yeah. All right. Uh, then. Okay. Uh, so for every query, we're supposed to find intervals with uh, that includes that query, and. From this mm -hmm. list of intervals, we're supposed to get uh, the one with the minimum, the minimum window. So our in yes. window is right minus left plus one. That means it's inclusive. That mm -hmm. means like the first interval here is has okay. That's four. The window is four, and for the second one, it is three. I see. Then okay. So. Uh, as I said first, what I'm thinking now is I can sort the intervals and yeah, I can sort the intervals by, by, by their window, maybe, uh, wait, let me think about this for a minute. Okay. All right. Uh, I think. We, yes, we can sort intervals and we can also sort queries, but we don't we don't want to lose uh, the indexes for our queries. So we we'll also keep our index and and still we'll sort it with our like the queries value. Then uh, we will collect intervals like that uh, have like that that includes the query, and from those intervals. Like we'll pick the, with the one with the minimum window, and uh, 
one one obvious data structure that we can work that with is I think heap or priority queue because we can push our intervals into into uh, heap by their by their window so that we can use mini heap for like with their inter like interval difference or with their window then uh, after we collect those intervals in our heap we will just pick the one with the minimum window does it yep, make sense that makes sense all right uh all right but just for convenience do you mind running your this uh algorithm with the first example okay uh so we're given two for the, for our query that means like the first one like we're given two our our current query is two and uh from our intervals the one that are valid is the first one is valid right with a distance of four uh the second one is also valid with a distance of uh three and yeah only those are valid that means for the first query, uh, like this one is minimum, the second one is minimum. So for the first query, our result is going to be three, which is uh, like the size of the the size of the interval. Does it make sense? Yeah. Uh, the result is three because, uh, as you discussed earlier, the interval was the uh, smallest window, which means the top of the heap is two four, mm. right? Okay, makes sense. Yes. So, uh, should I think of something better, or should I implement this one? Maybe, maybe let's talk about the time complexity. What's our time complexity? Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, okay, we're sorting the intervals as well as the queries. And after that, we'll just use a priority queue to get the minimum one. Uh, so I think, uh, OK, do we know that the size of intervals in queries? Uh, are they equal always, or? Uh, they, not uh, necessarily. No. This is just their upper limit. All right, then like assuming uh, time, okay. Assuming like the length for the intervals is I and okay. the length for the queries is Q, then uh, like sorting this will be I look I and sorting this one will be I look Q log Q, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, whichever is the maximum one, I guess, or we can actually like add it or whichever is the maximum one, like worst case. Okay, we can just add it. That would be, I guess the, yeah, that would be the time complexity. Yeah, how about the operations you do on the heap? Do you think it changes or affects your time complexity overall? <laughs> no, overall, it's not going to affect it because it's not going to be more than this one and they're uh, parallelly, it's not like nested. So no, that's not going to affect yep. the time complexity. And space is, uh, what am I going to save is, yeah, I'm going to save the sorted query and the sorted interval. And there is also the heap. So the heap is not going to be more than like, yeah, more than the size of the intervals in the query. So I would say the interval plus the query array will be my space. Yep. Okay. Uh, 
Shall I go ahead and start implementation? Uh, but I think so, but it's really your call. <clears throat> All right. Uh, then in that case, we have our heap. Uh, okay, we also need our results, array, which is going to be uh, similar with our queries, right? And uh, yeah, similar with our queries. So for, uh, okay, if we find the smallest interval, we'll push that to our result. But if not, we'll push minus one. So I'll just initialize it with minus one maybe. But we don't have to do that. Maybe we'll get back to it later. I don't know. Okay. Uh, and okay, we'll let's sort our intervals. And uh, let's sort our queries. Right. Uh, okay, let's sort. Okay, and we don't want to lose the indexes for the queries, so. Maybe we, yeah, for the queries, I think we don't want to lose the their index, as I said. So we have to keep their index. Uh, I would say, so I'll, I'll change them into tuple, maybe, with their index. Uh, Mm. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, that shall do it. Then we'll sort it. And so we sort it. Okay, let's go over all the queries and we'll push uh, valid intervals into our heap. That means for query and, uh, sorry, for index and query in our, oh, we, okay, I, I think we, we put the query first, so let's start with the query. For query and index in. Yeah, we will go over uh, the queries in our queries, the query in our queries, then, and uh, we'll keep pushing the intervals uh, if they are valid. So intervals. Mm. Okay, wait. Uh, let me think over some details for a minute. All right. So, Kadus, are you still with me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Well, but, like. All right, uh, then for our, in, like the beginning of the interval, if that's less than the query, I will push, uh, I will push the interval. And like when I push it, I would do, uh, I, I mean, I would push their window. So uh, their window also I need, this variable to keep track of, yeah, to, to, to keep track of my queries. So I would say my intervals of, uh, yeah, like the second, uh, yeah, the right end of my interval minus the left end of uh, my interval plus one. 
and yeah i'll push this one and also i want to keep yeah i want to keep their position so let's say i push this one and uh okay like at the moment i'm, I'm only pushing intervals of intervals by their beginning so what if it comes out of the interval which means like the query could be uh more than the left side of the interval but it could be also more than the right side of the interval so in that case i have to pop them out and to pop them out so i'll check if my hip is not empty and uh my intervals in those elements I, I already pushed. Uh, I'll start from the first one and I'll see their left. Uh, yeah, I'll go to those intervals and I'll check their right limits. And if that's, uh, okay, if it's right, yeah, that, if that's less than my query, then I'll pop them out. Mm, yes, I'll pop them out. And like from those that are left in my hip, I'll just pick the first one since like the hip will give me the minimum one first. So I'll do if my hip is not still empty, my result at that index uh yeah index is going to be the yeah, the first element in my heap okay else else result of i don't need else actually yeah Let's initialize my result array with minus one so that I don't need else. Yeah, uh, and this one is going to be the size of the lane of queries. Okay, I think so. Uh, Okay, is it clear or shall I go over it? Yeah, it sounds clear, but um, and looks clear, but uh, yeah, I oh. would advise you to go over it once. Be okay, so all right, I have my hip. I instantiated my results array with minus one, so that if we don't find something valid here by the end, we'll just keep minus one. And the other thing is yes. We sorted the queries and also keep the index. That's also correct. And went over all the queries and we check the beginning of the interval, the, the, the left limit of the interval and the right limit of the interval. Like the left limit to push into the hip and the right limit to pop out of the, lip, the hip because yeah, if, yes, makes sense. And, oh, and I'm incrementing I hear, so it might come out of index. I have to mm -hmm. do the checking here. I should be less than uh, the length of intervals. Yes. Yeah. Otherwise, I, I keep incrementing the I, and when I try to access some interval, some intervals, it would come out of index. That's one change I would made. Other than that, let me check uh, the numbers here. Hmm. Yeah, makes sense. Yes, uh, can I try it with, like if I have uh, some syntax errors and something like that, can I run the code and try uh, it? Yeah, sure, okay. Okay.
Okay. Um, let me try it with some test cases. Okay. Okay, I can generate this peak query and interval. So, um, Okay. Uh, um, uh, what was the aim of the last PCs you run? What were you, what was you trying to like check? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, here, like in the beginning, I was just trying to get. Here, I only have one interval, and mm -hmm. all our all my queries are not in that interval. So none of this will be done. Like I won't push to the heap and I won't pop out anything. I will just return my uh, result array I initiated first. And here I have uh, two intervals here. And actually I, I just compromised this one when I when I find out zero is not a valid test case. Okay. But here too, like I have uh, two queries, similar queries. Uh, that means like if something is because like I'm pushing into my hip and I'm popping out, like if one query came and the other query, similar query came back again, mm -hmm. like if that's going to make, uh, create some problem or not. Oh, thank you. All right. Shall I submit it? And see sure why not all right uh okay cool oh thank you so i guess that uh that concludes uh your uh, session so yeah right. you can stop you can stop sharing the screen and maybe you can tell us uh what was good about this question what um like what made it easy for you at the beginning like what kind of things you saw in the questions that um uh, like that, that lead you to this solution okay uh let me open the question okay uh I think th there are so many problems like this one, and I don't know if my judgment would be fair for like for our audiences. But uh, one thing I see is like there are we are given queries and we are given intervals, and in such cases we are just trying to get uh, the minimum window. So like if sorting is available. You just have to sort this guy in the thing, I guess. And when I check the constraints, it says 10 raised to 5. That means sorting is going to be fine. I'm not sure why this question was hard. So that's why I was confused. Uh, like, I thought I, I missed something because this is a straightforward one. Like, you can, you can just sort the queries, sort the intervals, and you'll just check. Uh, from the minimum one. And also, if you know about hips, I think this is going to be, this is, I think this is a medium problem. And like, I was thinking the whole time something was hidden in the question, something I didn't mm -hmm. notice, but that wasn't the case. So I just, I'm not sure. Cool. Uh, so yeah. Um... Let's let's go over my notes for. Uh, okay. Thank you, Nat. That, that, that. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can turn off your video now. <laughs> thank you. Um, so the first one was Faya. Uh, after reading the question, he explained his uh, brute force solution. That was pretty quick in the first minute. And he wanted some time to think of, think to think over some paper, and after quite some time, we 
uh, got to the optimal solution, but uh, we didn't have enough time to uh, code it and uh, get accepted uh, with the given time window. But uh, and that second session with Nati, uh, he did a pretty good job of uh, summarizing the question, and um, we we saw how we. Uh, tried to tackle the question, made it uh, easy to follow up, and he was able to do it within the time constraints and get accepted. So my decision for this round would be to, to uh, uh, make Nati pass to the next round. So congrats, Nati. Uh, see you on the finals.